Hello and welcome to another session of Informally Formal. I am excited as always because today I bring to you someone that is intelligent, sharp, very knowledgeable, and someone that is a mover and shaker in the digital space in Bangladesh. I'm talking about Rahel Ahmed. He is the new CEO of Nogod, the uh, latest, I would say, entrant into the uh, mobile financial space in Bangladesh. Prior to that, he was managing director of Prime Bank. Before that, many senior positions at Standard Chartered. He has also had senior management positions with various banks in the Middle East. I am super excited. Welcome. Welcome to you, Rahel. Welcome to the show. Thank you, Agur Bhai. Thank you for having me here and thanks for the uh, kind words. Absolutely. Absolutely. You worth every word of it. So let's get started, um, Rahel. Today, our topic is going to be about the mobile financial services space in Bangladesh. And my first question to you would be, you know, people would spend a lifetime wanting to be the managing director of a bank. Now, you left a, you know, solid position with uh, being the managing director of Prime Bank and moved to Nagar. What prompted you to do that? Uh, to be very honest, I mean, if you have looked at my career, I've spent roughly about 26 years in banking, in pure commercial banking. When I had been in discussion with Nagot for last almost uh, a year, uh, till I joined them, uh, I looked, the basic thing that kind of tickled me uh, was the scale uh, of people's uh, lives that I could touch. I mean, when I was an MD or CEO of a conventional bank, I could cater or serve, say, roughly about two to two and a half million customers. And today, as we speak, I'm catering or touching lives of roughly about 40 million customers. So 40 million out of 170 million people and serving their financial needs, uh, who wouldn't want to be in that position wow. and through the digital means. And you guys are just getting started, just getting warmed up, right? That's for sure. You can count on us. I mean, it's only been two years and we have taken over roughly about 35% uh, of the market share. Right. That is awesome. Let me ask you then, Rahel, what opportunities do you see now? Elaborate a little bit more in the uh, mobile financial services sector in Bangladesh. Tell me. As you know, just about 10 years back from now, uh, based on the digital Bangladesh vision of Honorable Prime Minister, the financial sector kind of started uh, exploring on this area. And these digital financial services or mobile financial services per se, as we say, uh, that kind of came into being. What unfortunately happened is that during those 10 years, it kind of became a monopolistic market because there had been number of licenses issued, but most of the players remained inactive. And uh, what you have seen, I mean, when the market started of mobile financial services, it kind of became an intra-country remittance uh, vehicle. So you want to send money from one corner of the country to the, another corner, it was a more of a money sending uh, a kind of a modality. So what we intend to do or what we foresee that we can be embedded in the lifestyle of, an, of a person in Bangladesh, waking up early in the morning and going back to sleep at night, anything and everything that touches his lives and relates to money can be substituted by these digital financial services that we are proposing to. So now, obviously, uh, the giant in the space that got it all started, Bikash, right? And, and you'd, be, you'd be right in saying that most people use Bikash for basically transferring money from one, one person to another, from one part of the country to another. But then they have also sent added utility payments and what have you. So now, are they your largest competitor and uh, what market share do they hold? As I was saying for the last 10 years since uh, mobile financial services came into play, it kind of became a monopolistic market. I mean, uh, there had been a number of licenses issued, but till we came into the play, they were roughly holding about 98% market share, I would say. Uh, but in last two years, as I said, that we have gained almost 35% market share as we speak. And every day we are increasing our market share because um, if we look at the customer numbers, they have roughly about 50, 54 million customers as we speak in 10 years. Whereas uh, we have acquired 
almost 40 million customers in the last two years. Wow. So that gives you a kind of a, a related uh, scenario how it goes. But definitely uh, kudos and uh, credit goes to Bcash for uh, being the maiden player in this market or in this space and creating avenues or creating roads or paths for many of us to follow later. Let me ask you, is it your uh, ascent, I mean, Nogat's ascent, would you say has a lot to do with the fact that, you know, it is uh, with the Bangladesh Postal Service? Is that the reason? Because the footprint already exists. Would that be one of the reasons as to why you're accelerating so fast? As you rightly touched on this, that we are uh, a service offered by Bangladesh Post Office. Uh, so that definitely adds to our strength. But what we have actually gained the momentum from is, as I mentioned earlier, is the technological innovation or the disruptions that we could create. I'll just take you know, half a minute by giving one example. Today, you go around all the financial institutions in the market. Uh, everyone is now going after electronic KYC or digital KYC as we speak. Uh, this was introduced in the market by Novod. Two years back when we started our journey, we first in the market that we were the one who brought in this electronic KYC. And prior to that, you know, one had to go and fill in a few pages forms to do the KYC and stuff. And it was time consuming for any of the uh, service provider to open an account. Uh, whereas Nogod brought in that disruption. Uh, for the last few months, as you may have seen, that uh, opening a wallet account with Nogod, it takes just a few seconds. And why we brought in that disruption? Because as you very well know that in Bangladesh, uh, the smartphone penetration is below 30% as we speak. So the most of the cell phone users are using bar phone. So when the COVID hit uh, the country last year, the Honorable Prime Minister and her uh, ICT advisor they all thought of this proposition that how do you go to the people instead of people are being brought out from their home in that COVID scenario. So we collaborated with the uh, mobile network operators and we came up with this innovative idea which has gained huge amount of traction in terms of acquiring for us. Just, uh, just for the uh, layman out there, uh, KYC is uh, know your customer. And obviously, uh, uh, yes. banks, any financial institution, before they lend money, they have to know who the customer is. Otherwise, you know, how do you get your money back, uh, so to speak? Uh, even beyond that, really, uh, even opening a regular account and stuff, you ought to know who your customer is. So now I would like to go a little bit into detail as to how do you go about uh, verifying? Could you just briefly, though, could you just go into that? When you press star 167 hash, the uh, connectivity that we have is with BTRC uh, through the telco operator. And as you know that the telco operator has your biometric data. And we are also at the same time connected with the government website called Porijoy, which has the largest and the sole database of the national IDs. So what we do by pressing star 167 hash, we are coordinating or touching in few seconds time with both BTRC as well as Porichoy and then getting it verified by the National Election Commission database. Now let me get into um, uh, pick your brain, Rahel. Uh, tell us, uh, so there are some uh, unique uh, propositions, I suppose, that Nogod brings to the fore. I would like for you to just briefly touch upon those as to why Nogod instead of Bikas or someone else? The first and foremost thing, I mean, as, as I said, till we came into the play, uh, the market was monopolistic. So when the monopolistic market is operating, so the cost uh, for the consumer, uh, you can't have any impact on that. Uh, as you may have seen last year, we brought down the cash out cost. I mean, primarily Bangladesh is still predominantly a cash in cash out market. People try to cash out and especially the marginal population of the country as we speak. Uh, so for them, every penny counts. And uh, in the market, the cash out charge had been roughly about 20 taka, um, where we brought it down to a single digit 9.99, excluding the VAT and AIT. So even if you add the VAT and AIT, it is roughly about 11.49. 
So we kind of created that cost convenience for the end consumers and especially the marginal population of the country. We had kept the money sending feature free for all. Uh, even if you're making utility payments, that is free, uh, no cost associated to that. So these are unique features or cost convenience that we had been offering from the day one till date. Okay, now let's step out of uh, your, uh, take your uh, novel hat off. Speak in general to me about uh, the uh, opportunities in the mobile financial space. What do you see? Fast forward five years. What do you see that space? What does it look like? Uh, I would say not even five years. I would say much earlier. Uh, the digital financial services, as we speak, uh, becoming digital bank. I mean, digital bank is the call of the time. At the moment, the services that we offer are just few of the services short than what a conventional or a legacy bank offers. If I am or we are given the entitlement or the right to save money for people uh, as well as lend money for people, uh, then we become a full-fledged bank. So uh, as we have seen in the West for the last four, five, six years, and we are seeing more happening in Asia, in different markets in Asia, uh, Vietnam, Philippines, Malaysia, Singapore, even the neighbor country, India, uh, they're opening up the digital banking space quite rapidly over the last couple of years. This is one space where we think we are ready now to trans um, kind of, um, you know, uh, shift from this mobile financial services or digital financial services to a full-fledged DigiBank. Okay. So that is what I see happening. I have not to interrupt, but I'm surprised that you didn't mention China. Because as you very well know, in China, many places, you can't even, you can't even, uh, your uh, uh, local, I mean, uh, the currency, whatever currency that you carry is not even accepted. So between all these DG payments and stuff like that, you go, you basically use your phone and that's it. My apologies. Yes, China is definitely the best example of Asia. Uh, but, you know, why I'm talking about other countries, not China, because China over the last 10, 12 years, the digital behavior uh, of the whole society or the full ecosystem has been built as such that you can't even buy a banana on the street or a water without uh, making a digi payment. Exactly. But countries like, countries like ours, uh, say if I compare ourselves and more like the neighboring countries or even the Southeast Asia country, Asian countries, uh, where the digital behavior is not as penetrated as in China, uh, this, is, uh, this is something which is forthcoming. And uh, the government has been initiating this for the last 10 years, as, we, as, we, as I mentioned, that the digital Bangladesh vision has been there, the digital infrastructure has been built over a period of time, uh, the digital behavior has been accelerated over the last one year, uh, so now the space is ready, I would say, to slowly uh, kick off with the DigiBank. Uh, very quickly now, we're coming to the end of the session. It's amazing how when you're having fun, how time flies, you know. Uh, talk about, real quickly, talk about uh, digital lending. How far away is that? And by the way, I must mention that you're one of the um, person that pushed through the, uh, what is it called, uh, no collateral lending in the ICT sector, is that correct? Yes, yes. Uh, last year when uh, the COVID hit the country, I mean, uh, uh, during my immediate past role uh, from Prime Bank, we were the first one to offer collateral free uh, credit uh, to the ICT sector companies. Uh, that became a great success at that point of time. And that was the call of, you know, the need of the time. Uh, the digital lending, uh, as you were asking, has already started uh, in a very minimal scale uh, as we speak, but that needs to be, you know, uh, expanded further. Uh, Bcash has started it with uh, collaboration with City. Uh, they call it nano lending. Now, in Bangladesh, as we as we know, that almost ninety percent of the payments are still made cash uh, by cash. So that digital behavior needs to be fostered further. To, to bring in that full-fledged digital ecosystem uh, ready for digital lending. But it is happening slowly, but steadily. And I see that being accelerated in next two to uh, three years max. You know, we have talked about kind of uh, the uh, present uh, landscape as well as 
what the future looks like uh, in this space. So, you know, in conclusion, just give me in three, four bullet points, what the future looks like. The future for financial industry uh, or financial market per se, the future looks awesome. Bangladesh is in the right point as we speak or uh, in, in, at the vantage point. Uh, we often talk about the demographic dividend that we have, the young millennial population that we have, the change in the behavior, uh, as I keep stressing on the digital uh, behavior, that is kind of changing. Uh, it's no longer the urban population or the urban youth, but the non-urban youth is also kind of uh, moving in uh, to this space. Companies like Nogod, who, who, who loves to do disruptions, there would be many more Nogods who would be coming in and trying to disrupt the market and change it upside down. And that is what uh, is intended. And that is what is required to take us to the next level or become the next China. I guess we'll have to wrap it up with that. Uh, Rahel, I would just, in uh, conclusion, there is few of the things that is running through my mind as we go about uh, penetrating and looking at mining all the data and stuff. I hope that we bear in mind the data privacy issues of individuals. Uh, that would be that would be uh, very very important uh, to have. And the other thing is, uh, I don't know if you guys have looked into uh, maybe collaborating with some of the other social media space that already have tons and tons of data that you could use to, uh, you know, pattern the buying habits of uh, people over here. And one last thing is, uh, you know, uh, broadband. In uh, city centers, urban centers, we have great broadband connectivity, but in the rural areas is still mostly data. I hope that we're able to overcome that. And my closing remarks would be, I've always said it in each and every one of my sessions, broadband, internet connectivity is like roads and highways, make it free. So with those uh, words, I guess, Rahel, what a pleasure it was. I love talking to uh, movers and shakers, someone like you that is making things happen. What a pleasure. I'd like to thank, thank you, you so once, much. Once again, thank our audience for joining us. Please stay safe, stay home. We are going through some bad times, but we shall overcome it. And uh, I will see you in the next session. Bye-bye.